Hey guys, this is Jan for Chess24. Six rounds have been played in the US Chess Championship, so it's about time to start paying attention. Hikaru Nakamura is leading with four and a half out of six, and in this video we're gonna take a look at a game between Ray Robson and Wesley So. Wesley So on three and a half out of five, trying to catch Nakamura in the lead. Nakamura and So, the two overwhelming favorites, the two top 10 players. This storyline of the event. Let's have a look at Wesley So facing Ray Robson, who's not a slouch himself. Quietly rose to 2656, I believe. Not an easy game in store for Wesley So. Trying to keep the pace and let's see how it went. Here we go, Robson plays 1e4, Robson himself on 3 out of 5, coming from a loss against Gatakamski, the veteran in the field in the last round, looking to strike back as well. Wesley So plays solidly here, plays e5 and knight c6 and meets the Rui Lopez with the Berlin Wall, the move knight to f6. Of course, a perfectly Good move, the most popular system among the world's top players. Some people, when having to name a favorite for this US individual championship, they said Nakamura was a favorite because he was more flexible in the opening, beating slightly weaker players. I'm not sure that holds true, but ratings tend to be pretty accurate, and both these guys, Nakamura and So, have played their fair share of weaker players. And Ray Robson at 2656 and rising. I'm not sure this is the guy you want to gamble against. So I think the opening choice is fine. But Robson does play a very solid line. Castles, knight takes e4, rook e1. Which, this move rook e1, of course the main line is d4, knight d6, bishop takes, pawn takes. The Infamous Berlin ending, we've seen enough of h3, bishop d7, king e8, and <coughs> whatnot in all the super tournaments recently. That said, the move rook e1 is a valid alternative if white does not want to take any strategic risk. What normally happens is you get a symmetrical pawn structure where white's pieces are slightly, slightly better and he's trying to make something of that very small advantage. And that's a problem for Berlin players, these positions they're very hard to win and they're not that much fun to play either. Anyway, move by move, you have to start with knight d6, attacking this bishop. Not a very pretty square for the knight, but what to do? Knight takes e5, threatens knight takes c6, check. So, there's no time for knight takes b5, bishop e7 has to be played. Now bishop f1, the bishop retreats. All of this has been seen in thousands of games. Knight takes e5, rook takes e5, castles. The only problem black has is his knight on d6 is a bit misplaced. The white pieces are still at home, but they develop very fluidly normally. d4, c3, bishop d3, bishop f4, knight d2. Well, for black it's a bit more of a challenge. Anyway, in this position, d4 used to be the absolute main move, but there has been an alternative that gained a lot of popularity, and that's the move played in the game, the move knight to c3. Very direct play, the knight wants to jump to d5 and it's preparing a very, very forcing sequence where white hopes to gain a small edge. Next black move might look strange, but it is the best and established move in this position, the move knight to e8. Knight from e8 does a couple of things. First of all, it gets away from this bad d6 square. It prepares away for c6, d5. It vacates the d6 square for the bishop, which would like to go there, and it's starting to regroup itself to either f6 or even g7 in some lines. So knight e8 is a good multi-purpose move. There are alternatives, but they're not as pleasant here. c6 is often met by a quick d4, d5. And bishop f6, rook e1 is fully playable, but white has had some hopes of claiming an advantage here with a quick knight d5 or d4, d5 as well. So knight e8 is the move they play, and now we see the idea of white's play. The very brute force knight to d5, attacking this bishop, bishop d6, and rook e1. Here the most natural move, and the move played most of the time, is the move c6, kicking this knight away. When after knight e3, 
White idea really is to move this knight as often as possible and then exchange it for a bishop. And that's what's been happening in a lot of games. Bishop c7, knight f5, d5, knight e7, check, king h8, knight takes c8, queen takes or rook takes, let's say rook takes. White has the smallest of pluses because of his two bishops against black's bishop and knight. But black managed to solve all his other problems and in practice these games tend to end drawish. However, white has a tiny tiny ash and very little risk. So it is a very viable opening choice by Ray Robson. And Wesley So, who's one of the best prepared guys out there in this position, somewhat surprisingly, spent a lot of time and played the move knight to f6. It's a playable move, it's supposed to be slightly less good than c6, but the surprising thing is that So did not seem that familiar with this line. I'm not quite sure, maybe he was looking for an alternative to spice the position up, and that's why he went for this. Knight f6, perfectly logical move as well, trying to exchange knights. Problem is after knight takes f6, queen takes f6, black still hasn't managed to get in his c6 d5 stronghold in the center, which he needs. And after d4, doesn't look like white has a development advantage, but the white pieces just can get into the game a lot more easily than the black pieces, so black is still struggling to equalize here. Move that looked most appealing to me is the move b6, intending bishop b7, followed by rook a8. But if you put some moves on the board, it turns out it's not so simple. For example, queen g4, bishop b7, bishop d3, not forced, but I just want to show you this line, rook a8, and it looks like black achieved everything he wanted, but all of a sudden there's bishop to g5, and it turns out this queen on f6 is dangerously short of squares. It's trapped, actually, it doesn't have anywhere to go. So this idea, bishop g5, is kind of a nuisance for black, and it stopped so from playing b6, so, so I would assume. So he went for c6, once again with the idea of bishop c7 and d5. That's White's job to keep him busy while he does that, because if he were to get in bishop c7, d5, the position would just be dead equal. Ray Robson starts with a move bishop e3, which I found a bit surprising, looks a bit odd. You didn't need to defend this pawn and it blocks the e-file. It has a concrete idea of often going d5 and bishop d4. I'm not sure if it's best. The move bishop d3 looked quite appealing as well, tending once again to go something like queen h5, bishop g5, or queen g4, bishop g5. It's not winning. Black is solid. Bishop c7, let's say queen h5, h6, bishop d2. But it's still a bit unpleasant for black. So I think it's safe to say this knight f6 opening experiment we won't see that often again still black is not lost and he just has to defend bishop e3 was played in the game bishop c7 was the move you'd expect but it runs into d5 this is the idea of white's play i believe instead wesley so went for the move b6 now which makes a lot of sense in terms of stopping d5 and reacting to bishop e3 clearly intending d5 d5 now bishop b7 and black is okay, just in time to develop everything. Still, it looks like, it looks a little clumsy. These move make, moves make perfect sense, but black is still reacting to white's moves and it's not straightforward how to finish development. b6, Ray Robson went for the move bishop d3, now adjusting to his opponent's play as well, adjusting to the move b6. And now, so played bishop c7. Bishop b7 once again runs into the quite unpleasant queen g4 with the idea of bishop g5 and queen takes d7. Bishop c7 played, intending to finally go d5. White can't or doesn't want to allow that, and he plays d5 himself. Not forced, by the way. c4 was an interesting move, trying to stop black from going d5 by <clears throat> having this double attack. And queen h5 was also a way to keep some initiative. But d5 is very principled and it's the move Ray Robson intended when he played bishop to e3. Let's first answer the question, why can't black take on b2? He can't because he would lose a brilliancy and normally people don't want that. 
First, I will go bishop to d4, cute little move, occupying this diagonal. And of course, cashing in on the fact that queen takes d4, runs into bishop, it takes h7 with a nice little discover check winning the queen. So queen has to go somewhere else, queen b4. And here would be one of these rare cases where white can get in the, what do we call it? The Lusker double bishop sacrifice. I'm not sure that's the correct term. Maybe it's Horwitz bishops or something like that. I'm not sure what it's called, but it works. Bishop h7, king h7, queen h5 check, king g8, and bishop takes g7. Always a pleasure if you can make something like that happen in a tournament game. Unfortunately, most of these 27, 88 guys won't allow such stuff. They're pretty good at smelling it out. King h8, rook e3, and white wins. Rook h3 or rook g3 will decide the game. So that would have been cute, but of course not going to happen against Wesley. So next question and less impressive question is why is cd5 not good? Well, then white goes queen h5 with a double attack against d5 and h7. And that explains So's next move. He goes bishop e5, now seriously threatening to take on b2. And after c3, which was played, he can take on d5. And this bishop blocks the white's queen's access to the d5 square. Instead, Robson played a maneuver which surprised me. I think it's quite clever. <clears throat> But it's not easy to spot or think of, at least for me. He goes for the move queen to g4. Threatening all kinds of things, bishop g5 mainly. But the surprising thing is black has a very natural d6 attacking the queen and it has to move again. Now he goes queen a4, which made me wonder why do you go queen g4 and then queen a4 and not queen a4 immediately. But the maneuver has its points, queen g4, d6 queen a4. For starters now f4 is a threat. The pawn on d6 cuts off the bishop's retreat and black has to react to that. And the pawn on d6 also weakened the c6 square. So white can use that square to attack the pawn on d5. By the way, black at the moment has an extra pawn but there is no even not even thing one shouldn't even think of black having an advantage here. Black is still trying to equalize and finish development. A normal scenario would be that he loses this pawn on d5 and ends up with a slightly worse position because he has a pawn weakness on d6. But if he manages to develop in the meantime, he's gonna be kind of okay. First, you have to react to the threat of f4 and that's what so does. He plays queen d8, freeing the f6 square for his bishop. Rook 81, I like that move. Robson, understanding the position, knows he doesn't have to force matters and he will win this pawn back by either bishop b5, bishop c6, or bishop c2, bishop b3. No hurry. Bishop e6 is the best move. Bishop b7 might look more natural. And then bishop a6 is quite unpleasant, exchanging the defender of this pawn. And white keeps pressure. So bishop e6, better move. Robson goes bishop b5. Now, Starting to think about, let's take this pawn back. So can't really stop him from taking the pawn back. So, in <laughs> so he decides to expand on the queen side instead. A6, bishop c6, and b5, gaining a bit of space, creating some counterplay potentially in the future. And Robson goes for queen to a3. Keeping the queen on the queen side, staying in touch with the a6 pawn. It's a good move, quite ambitious. You could have gone for the more humble, let's say queen c2, rook c8. I ah, know, bad. No, probably not rook c8, let's say rook b8, bishop takes d5. White keeps a small plus, as mentioned earlier. The d6 pawn is a weakness. White is slightly better. But Robson wants more than that. Queen a3, he wants his queen to pick up the a6 pawn. That's what happens. Queen Rook to b8, he goes queen takes a6. Very ambitious, it wasn't too late to go bishop takes d5. Objectively, maybe this was still the way to go with a tiny plus. But white wants more, he wants to go for the kill with queen takes a6. Problem is the queen, well, it decentralizes a bit and also black gains some valuable time to create some counterplay, which was unthinkable after, let's say, bishop takes d5. 
But here, there's two options. There's a move so plate, the move b4. There was an alternative, which might have been even stronger. The move queen h4. Threatening queen h2. I'm assuming g3 is what he didn't like, but now there's a surprising queen switch. Does one say that? Queen a4. When it seems black is all right, white is nothing better than takes, takes, and all of a sudden this rook on b8 plays a very promising role attacking the b2 pawn. And there is no way for white to keep an advantage. For example, bishop c1 runs into a3, takes, bishop takes, and only black can be better. So objectively, I believe this queen a3 and especially queen takes a6 operation was a bit, bit too much and queen h4 would have been all right for black. So instead plays b4, which is also fine, trying to open up the queen side before he goes queen h4. He wants his queen to recapture on b4 if possible. Bishop a7, very concrete play, trying to chase this rook away from the open b file and in some lines even winning the exchange by following with bishop b7. Rook to c8, what else? Now Robson decides to take on b4. Once again, pushing his luck a little bit, but he really wants to win this game and he's willing to take risks. Was, wasn't too late to play very solidly, play bishop d4. When the game should probably, black should hold after something like bishop d4, rook d4, queen c7, because he managed to create enough counterplay. Bishop d5, let's say, takes, takes, takes here, takes. And this should end peacefully. But Robson is not having any of it. Instead, c takes b4. He keeps playing very ambitiously. Wants to queen one of his passed pawns on the queen side and is willing to take risks because after queen h4, there is some risk for white. He has his forces shattered or concentrated at least on the queen side. His king is a bit alone. If g3, which looks natural, queen takes b4, black is already doing extremely well because he's so coordinated and these pawns aren't really going anywhere. The b3, let's say rook c7, it's hard to come up with the move for white. Only black can be and is better here. But Robson had a different idea. He wants to sacrifice the exchange. That's what he did. Rook takes e5 to buy himself some time and then get his pawns rolling. d takes e5. Problem is, it wasn't only an exchange, he also repaired black's pawn structure and gave him quite a dangerous passer by himself with the d pawn. So objectively, Robson is pushing his luck a little bit here. However, it's a very sharp position and it can go either way. Bishop c5, rook fd8. Sure, so was quite happy here. All of a sudden, he's an exchange up. He has squares for all his pieces and a pass d pawn, but he still has to deal with these guys. a4, not in a particular hurry. b5 was another way to play. When after d4, once again, black is fine, but maybe this was objectively better. Now something like bishop b6, trying to chase his rooks around. But Robson has other plans, a4, answered by d4, very natural, freeing this bishop, freeing this square, and pushing your passed pawn. Things have gone well for Wesley, so bishop b7, once again, he's resorting to attacks against these black rooks, trying to win material back or at the very least to chase them around, but here it is played to win an exchange, bishop b7. But so rightly did not prevent that and is not that afraid of it. Rook b8, bishop a7, this rook now is trapped, but black has more than one good opportunity here. In the game, Wesley so played queen e7, which leads to an all right position for him, giving back the exchange and ensuring there's a double attack after he does so. But by playing that, he misses a much stronger opportunity. There was a move, rook takes b7. After queen takes b7, all of a sudden, white is a pawn up. But we have a new situation with opposite colored bishops. With opposite colored bishops, it often matters who attacks, who has the initiative, more than who has extra material. And here it turns out that black has a very, very nasty tactic. Bishop to d5, queen to c7. Oops. <coughs> Queen to c7 and the move bishop takes g2 when white is borderline lost. You can't take it because after king g2, queen g4. 
it's not only a double attack but the king is also forced to step into a check on the back rank so this is just winning and everything else also looks pretty grim for white queen takes e5 for example it's met by queen to g4 <clears throat> and there's already some serious serious mating threats which are very very hard to parry for example rook takes d4 runs into a very quick mate after bishop a3 this is the simplest and nicest way rook takes g4 rook d1 with the back rank mate so long story short rook takes b7 followed by bishop take bishop to d5 was very very strong for black would have posed probably insurmountable troubles for ray robson who's played very optimistically but not correctly over the last couple moves so queen e7 was played which also keeps black's advantage after rook b8 after bishop b8 rook b8 this bishop has to move bishop f3 queen takes b4 black is slightly better here because this pawn is weak and his central control especially his d pawn do count for something his pieces are more coordinated however you have to keep an eye on the a pawn and once again it is a very sharp concrete situation a5 was played white mobilizes his trump and i don't like wesley so's next move at all he plays the move g5 it makes sense to create a luft for the king but g5 really weakens the king a lot and there's still too much material on the board the idea must have been to have g4 as a resource in some lines but that's easily parried by white's next move h3 when white also gets a luft and he stops black from going g4 when this i think was just too much Instead, well, there's some computer moves, bishop b3, and the computer says black is seriously better for the rook a1, bishop c2, paving the way for the d pawn and also intending queen takes b2. Queen takes b2 immediately wasn't that promising because of queen d6. We'll see something similar in the game. And if you need a luft, I think g6 was a much better option than g5. Anyway, g5 was played, why went h3, and... Now queen takes b2 happened. It's still bad timing. He shouldn't have done that. The last couple moves by Wesley So were uncharacteristically shaky. He's a fantastic tactician, fantastic calculator, but something went wrong for him over these moves. After g5, it's no longer easy. And as they say, a mistake often... I'm not sure what they say. Mistakes come in pairs, something like that. Anyway... Queen takes b2, bad move, he should have played king g7, taken his king off the back rank when the position is still kind of equal. But this g5 is just not a pretty sight. Queen takes b2, why is this a bad move? It runs into queen d6 and all of a sudden white is much better coordinated than black. Black trump was coordination with his queen on b4. Now no longer the case. e5 is under attack and a6, a7 is a very serious threat. Black can't parry everything and he can't includes his <clears throat> trifecta is that a word i don't speak english very well today his third mistake in a row rook to c8 after which there's already no escape the only way to stay in the game was queen b4 queen takes e5 rook to b5 managing to stop or to take this a5 pawn just in time white is slightly slightly better after something like queen f6 queen takes a5 rook takes d4 Oh no, sorry, let's say queen takes d4. But black should hold this position. It's very reduced material. We had to find queen b4 and come to the realization this is the best you can do. That Wesley so played rook c8, but that just loses. Queen takes e5. We see the problem with g5. Now this pawn is hanging. It's a big check. d4 pawn is also under attack. The white a pawn is still alive. The position just cannot be saved. Something has gone very wrong over the couple moves here. In Ray Robson's time travel, Wesley So had more time on the clock. I'm not quite sure what it was, but after h6, queen takes d4, the game is pretty much over. White has an extra pawn, and what an extra pawn. And the better coordination, there's not much black can do. So tried. Queen, queen takes, rook takes, rook c1 check, hoping to get in rook a1 after king h2 when he would 
well, at least make it very hard for white, but white is not forced to go king h2, play the much stronger move rook to d1. The bishop ending is hopeless. Instead, rook c7 was played, but this is also hopeless. a6. This pawn will get a lot of help by either rook a1 or bishop b7. The problem is rook a7, I think this was still played, that now bishop b7 pretty much buries this rook alive. White has a very simple winning plan, rook d6 if needed, then bring the king and win. Wesley so decided to resign here, not much to do anymore, which means he fails to catch Hikaru Nakamura. He's one point behind on, let's see if we can find the standing somewhere, on three and a half out of six, while Nakamura has four and a half and... Mm, one second. <clears throat> Here we got them. <clears throat> Ray Robson with his victory climbs into sole second place. <clears throat> At four out of six, bounced back very well from the loss against Kamsky. Wesley So in fifth place with three and a half, however, he's only one point back. There's still a lot of chess to be played, and the event is gonna stay or become exciting now. Nakamura, by the way, with his excellent play, well, plus three, has crossed the 2800 mark. At some point he was rated number two in the world. Now he's slightly, slightly behind Fabiano Carana in the number three spot. Certainly a good year so far for Hikaru Nakamura. Let's see if he can be stopped in the US Championship. Wesley So did not have a good day at the office against... <clears throat> I'm sorry... Against Ray Robson, something went very wrong. First of all, in the opening, something seems to have gone a little wrong with all the time he took for the move knight to f6. But then he bounced back very well, got played well, got a promising position after Robson pushed his luck a little bit. But starting with the move queen e7, Wesley so lost the threat, and only seven, six, seven moves later, he would be completely lost. I'm sure he's gonna come back. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.